Hey, what's up turtles? Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. Today I wanted to do a video explaining some in-depth knowledge about feather sticks. What they are, how to use them, and how to make them. But before I get into the actual feather sticks, we gotta back up and talk about the tool we're gonna to use to make the feather stick, and that's gonna be a knife. Actually, I'll probably use all these knives in this video. You can use an ax, any sharp edge will work, but I have knives out with me today. But first I wanna talk about this knife. This is the Bark River. I forget exactly its model name, excuse me. We had, I've done a video on it, you can search our channel for this knife specifically, but why I chose to bring this one was because of its grind. This is a convex grind. And the reason why I have these four knives out in front of me is they're all different types of grind. To show, you can do a feather stick with multiple types of grind. So right here, we got a convex grind. Moving over to this knife, did not do a video on this knife yet, I only had it for about a month. This is uh, the BHK Brumby. Picked it up at a show. This knife, I'm sure, I don't think it's being made. I don't think it ever really was a production knife um, from BHK, maybe when they were blind horse knives. But um, this has a saber grind. Why I chose to bring this knife out has a saber grind on this. Next to that is the Mora Companion. Scandy grind on that. Uh, use Mora's a lot and you like the Scandy grind. And finally, right here, this is the SE4 with a full flat grind. And like I said, you can you do a feather stick with any of these types of grinds, but what's more important in the grind type is the knife needs to be very sharp because when you're making a feather stick, it's light pressure, but that only works if your knife is very sharp. So these are the four types of grinds we have with us today. And uh, from this point on, I'm gonna start actually producing the feather stick and talk a little bit more about when it comes in handy and, how, and when I use, um, use a feather stick. Here's a piece of wood I'm gonna be using to do some feather sticks and produce some kindling for our fire. Cause I am gonna get a little bit of a fire going just to show this all working in concert with each other. This is a little under a foot of standard measurement and it's a piece of tulip poplar. There's a little bit of green towards the center of this, but that's okay. I've, I've used this before and I know it will work for feather sticks and um, just um, you know, help get a fire going in general. So a few things that's gonna happen when we're gonna actually baton this piece of wood down. We're doing a couple things. If this wood's really wet, we're gonna be exposing the inner wood, which most likely will be dry, which will give us dry wood to create our feather sticks with. And like I said already, we'll be producing some kindling for our fire. So we're doing a lot of different things just with producing this. Well, this might be a little too green. Look how green that is, but you know what? We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it and see how it fares. I'm gonna keep producing, or yeah, producing some kindling. Cutting this down. And I think I'm gonna switch between knives and just show you all these grinds, how they will work. Like I said, this is pretty green in there. We're gonna see, do an experiment together. All right, doesn't wanna split and leave it where it is. I'm gonna toss that down the ground for now. We'll keep that as kindling and uh, do some of this for some feather sticks. Try this one more. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna start actually creating some feather sticks with this piece of wood. Now like I said, because this is green inside here, and I can see, you can see the coloration to where this is more dead and dry, this light color wood on the outside, I'm gonna keep my feather stick, I'm gonna start on the outside as opposed to from the inside, because this is green. A few things to keep in mind when you're gonna be doing a feather stick, if you're not really comfortable with carving or don't have too much experience, is that you really want sort of a flat plane, if anything, look for your flat plane, or you can use one that sort of dips down. If you see there's a slight dip indentation right here with the wood, and that would be okay because what I can do is just come in and carve 
in that depression. If I try to start on a hump, and it's slight, it's very slight, but if I try to start on a hump, what will happen, I'll start my feather stake and then the knife, because this area is lower, it's just gonna keep, it's just gonna basically knock the feather off. I'm not gonna have a continuation with that cut. So if anything, try to find it flat or find the sort of impression, depression, if you will, spot on the piece of wood that you're gonna be doing. And I'm probably gonna start my cut here and work my way down this way. And I'm gonna start with this flat grind. First thing, before I start cutting, there's a few things to keep in mind. If I tilt my knife this way, the curl is going to go one way. It's going to come back this way. If I tilt it this way, it's going to kick it out that way. And if I go perpendicular to the piece of wood, it's going to curl right on top of itself. With that being said, I want to sort of turn my body sideways, sort of lock my arm from the shoulder, not hyperextend my elbow joint, but sort of lock my arm and generate the force from my shoulder and start the cut. And usually when you first start, you're going to have to do a couple passes to get a ridge to sort of clear yourself a working space. And basically what a ridge is, is now that I've gone once flat, this, the, the exposed wood I just cut, there's a ridge on this side that the tip's very running on, and there's a ridge on this side. And I want to work with those ridges, so my next cut, pay attention to here, the tip of the knife is tracing. I'm going to focus on that and work that. Now I've created another ridge and I can go here. I can work, come over this way and work on this ridge. And if I want, kick the knife up this way and it'll push it out the other way. And it's basically what's comfortable for you. If you already hold the knife like this, this way or down. I really don't prefer this way too much, but some people do. You just have to practice and see what works for you. Nice big slicing motion. Like I said, this knife is sharp, very sharp. And if you do this correctly with enough light pressure, you can actually get curls that will take a spark. That's the full flat grind. I'm gonna switch now to something else. Switch into the Scandi grind. Look at this really nice pronounced corner. If I go really slow, which makes it more difficult if you go slow. <laughs> but you can sort of see. Light pressure, light pressure, light pressure. Sort of jumped off a little bit. And I'm making this way more difficult on myself. Why? Well, because I'm trying to talk and explain it the whole time while I'm doing it. See, I'm not really getting curls on this like I initially was. A few reasons for that. One, lost my concentration. Two, didn't have the best ridge. And three, there might be a three in there, but I'll leave that for another day. Oh yeah, the third one. <laughs> I switched knives, switched grind types, and there's always that little bit of a curve when you pick up a knife for the first time, if you haven't used it in a while to figure out the geometry again, the angle, how it likes to be used, all that stuff. Let's see what else, I'll go really slow. Can't really see it from that angle, but. Definitely not my prettiest attempt at a feather stick, but nonetheless, it will be useful. Um, I'll keep working with this and maybe get a fresh piece of wood for the last two knives. I'm gonna be stop talking and just concentrate on doing this now. Definitely, definitely not my best attempt at a feather stick. I'd like a little bit more beef to it, if you will, a little bit more wood. 
But with that being said, let's get another piece of wood and um, we'll make some more and try out these other grind types. Eventually I'm just going to make one without talking to see how I really can do. Um, but now I switch to the saber grind and I'm just switching these knives just to show that you can make these. If it wants to fall off, there's a few reasons why that'll happen. One, you're not getting a level sort of cutting field or you're just continuing your cut too much. Condition of the wood really matters a lot too. What do I mean by that? Well, what's the moisture content? How long has it been dead? Is it seasoned? Has it been standing dead for 20 years and is super hard now? All that comes into play with the quality of the feather stick. I'm just going to have to keep practicing. I'm getting in that green wood right now. I'll probably just stop. Again, not a great attempt. Usable, absolutely. As pretty is as effective as other ones I've made in the past? No, definitely not. But uh, I'm going to finish one out, maybe get another one, finish with that convex grind. This is the last knife I'm going to be using today. This is the convex grind and I'm going to try to make a really nice one and make some few, few curls at the end, excuse me, that will take, uh, take a spark from my ferro rod. Man, this is just biting so much more. Really made it difficult on myself by changing knives, but... I'm not really getting to curls. What do I want to do? Go a little more. This wasn't the best choice of wood for this. I can just tell the, the way it's reacting to the knives doesn't really want to, it's not really cutting like a more dried wood I expect. I mean, I'm not really getting hardly any curls with this convex. But I have before. Go check out the video on this knife, this Bark River specifically, and you'll see a feather stick I did on there. Let me just try straight. Not happy with this one at all. Love doing it on camera. Let me switch to Scandi. See if I can get some little nicer curls with this. Yeah, see that instantly? My ridges are pretty jacked up at this point. I'm on a goofy situation too, trying to get a nice frame for the camera. Not completely comfortable. That is ugly. <laughs> I thought I was good at feather sticks. <laughs> Change position, got a little better angle. Stop caring about the camera. This is all greenwood now, probably not going to take a spark, but. Think that'll be enough to get a fire going? Yeah, I think so. 
Before I do this, I'm gonna try to just get some really, really, really small, light, very thin curls. Try to take from a feather stick um, to take a spark. These are the type of curls I've been after the whole time. Usually what my feather sticks look like. I just was feeling a little goofy. On camera talking too much. Old Crick always talking too much. Yep, third person. Referenced. Do one or two more of these little curls. Light, light feathers. And then we're going to head to the fireplace and use all this. And show how it works. All right, so I have everything at the fire I need. Right here is our, the small curls. I'm gonna shower with sparks to get the initial flame. Ideally, this is what all, I wanted all my bigger feather sticks to be, these type of curls, just in a ball, basically that fit in the size of my hand. But it doesn't always go as planned. Um, and the wood condition had something to do with that, I believe. Here I have the three janky looking feather sticks that I'm basically just gonna put on top of this very lightly and sort of manipulate it as this fire gets going. Then I have some twig bundles I'm gonna add on top of the feather sticks sort of in a TP fashion, build this fire up. And then I have, last but not least, sort of some kindling that I'm gonna put on um, top of the twigs. This is some stuff stuff we baton down. Now there's a few ways you can mess with this. You can sort of get this down in the feathers and sort of scrape like this. I've done that sometimes, you end up destroying your feathers because they're delicate and kind of grinding right into them doesn't work but i like these soft fire steels or not fire steels ferro rods because i can just shower from a distance we're gonna try it that way Got a little overzealous with it, but we'll be all right. As you saw when I started adding my twigs towards the end of my twig addition, I uh, sort of got a little rushed, if you will. Drank some caffeinated coffee while I've been out here to stay warm. Don't drink it that often, got a little jacked up, um, which is okay. But you can see this fire still got going well enough. It should probably should have slowed down a little bit, but that's basically all there is to it. If you have any questions, um, any techniques I didn't go over, that you're curious about or issues you've had creating feather sticks or getting them to light, anything like that, let me know, leave a comment. Um, let me know your impressions of the video. Did you enjoy this video? Things you did, didn't like, you know, just let me know, leave a comment. I'm trying to create videos and create content that you find enjoyable, that you want to see. Let me know. This is Craig signing out with Black Outdoors. Later, turtles.